So, um, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is an absolute value inequality. We can see the absolute set value sign, and we see the inequality sign, all right? So when solving absolute value inequalities, what we're doing is we're actually bringing together everything that we have learned in this so far in this class. So the first thing, the biggest mistakes that students made when they're solving absolute value equations is they didn't isolate the absolute value. Whenever we're solving absolute value equations or inequalities, you have to isolate the absolute value. What that means is get the absolute value sign by itself. So you can see, regardless of what's inside the absolute value, you guys see that my absolute value is being added by 6 and multiplied by 2. Does everybody see that? Just the absolute value. Forget about what's inside of it. It's being multiplied by 2, added by 6. So we need to undo that before we do any work in this, for this uh, inequality. So I subtract 6 on both sides. So I have 2 absolute value of 3y minus 5 is greater than 9. Okay. Now I need to divide by 2, right? I need to undo the multiplying by 2. So I divide by 2. And I have the absolute value of 3y minus 5 is greater than now. Do you really want me doing this problem? Did I type this in there? Minus 5, 9. All right, I guess I'll do it. Fine. So I'll leave this as a fraction. All right. So now, and the main important thing, guys, don't be so worried about. I know you could convert that to 4.5, but I'm going to leave it as a fraction for the work I'm going to do. Um, so now we have an absolute value greater than 9.5. Now, for absolute value equations, we set up two cases, right? We did the positive, and then we did the ne negative. For an inequality, you're going to do the exact same thing. So you say 3y minus 5 is greater than 9 halves. Then you have to do the negation. 3y minus 5 is less than a negative 9 halves. Now, why, why did I flip the sign? Well, remember, when we're solving inequalities, whenever we multiply and divide by a negative number, we always had to flip the sign. So basically, when I created my second solution, Right? You write the original one, and then you write the same one, but you negate the right side. Well, since I'm negating it, I have to um, make it, I have to uh, flip the sign. There's another thing that I want you guys to write down in your notes. When we um, create, take an absolute value and create our two cases, what we do is we don't just create two inequalities that we have to solve. We now create a compound inequality. So if my original sign was this, I would create a compound inequality that was in the form and. Remember, compound inequalities that are in the form and, we only graph where they intersect. Rest, you guys kind of remember? Graph their intersection. Where if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, you create an or compound inequality, where usually the inequalities are going to be going in opposite directions. So this is a or inequality. So you're going to want to make sure you write that in. So you don't make a mistake when you graph it. Yes. So when you have your equation, your original equation, right, or your original inequality, if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, you're going to create an or compound inequality. If it's less than or less than or equal to, then when you set up your two cases, it's an and, and you write and. Yes. Two times three? Think of this as like a variable. It's like the same thing. It does, x is equal to the absolute value of 3y minus 5. All right? So we're not really doing anything. We're just looking at the absolute value sign. Okay? And anyways, even if this was an absolute value, if this was just like this, Still, if I divide by 2, I'm multiplying 2 times all of this, and I'm dividing 2 times all of this, so they would divide out. So you wouldn't have to distribute it anyways. OK? Yes? Again, listen. Shh. Ladies and gentlemen, if I have 2 times 3 divided by 2, all right, let's just think about what would this answer be. 2 times 3 is what? 6. 6 divided by 2 is? 
3. So when, you are, uh, when you're going across multiplication and division, I can just divide the 2 divided by the 2, right? So therefore, my answer is just 3. So here, this is 2 times the absolute value of 3y minus 5. So that's why those just eliminated. However, this is where it can get it confusing. This, when, you, when, you have, when you're dividing across addition or subtraction, then you have to break it up. Okay, So when, it's across, when, you, when you're dividing across addition or subtraction, you have to divide the two into both of them. However, when it's across multiplication, you, know, it doesn't, you can just divide those two out. Okay, Does that make a little sense? All right, so we're dealing with fractions. I apologize. I wasn't really planning on giving you guys a problem with fractions. One thing I want you guys to understand, though, so when doing fractions, we've got to make sure it has a denominator of 2, right? So one thing I want you guys to understand, so I'll add 5. And obviously, add 5. Now, if I'm going to add a whole number to a fraction, I'm basically saying 9 halves plus 5. Well, to add fractions, guys, you have to have the common denominator. You are probably not going to have one that's going to be as difficult as this. But make sure, I want you guys to understand, is, um, is 10 halves equal to 5? Is that the same thing? Yes, but 10 halves has a denominator of 2. Right? So it's much easier to add these. Since they have the same denominator, you can add them. So therefore, I'd have 3y is greater than, um, really, 10 halves plus 9 halves is 9 halves, or 19 halves. And then over here, I have negative 9 halves plus 10 halves. Right? Adding 5 is the same thing as adding 10 halves. So that's going to be 3y is less than um, 1 half. All right? Now, huh? No, there's not negative 9 plus 10. OK? Shh. Don't really get so confused, guys, with the fractions. Um, that's really not the main, main important thing that is really the, I know the fractions is probably the difficult thing that you guys aren't understanding. But you're not going to have many problems that are going to be dealing with fractions in this course, or I mean, in this type of worksheet. Um, so I just really want to make sure you guys understand that really the main important thing is you isolate the absolute value, you break it up into two cases. When you negate the one side, you flip. No, no, I'm sorry. No. Once you negate the other side, you flip the sign. Based on the original problem, you know what type of inequality it has. And then the last thing is to solve this. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, usually what we do is divide by 3, right? Divide by 3 to solve. We could also multiply by the reciprocal. Is multiplying by 1 over 3 the same thing as dividing by 3? Yeah. But since I have a fraction, I'm going to decide to multiply by the reciprocal. It's the same operation. But to me, it's going to make a little bit more sense. All right? So any number multiplied by reciprocal is 1. And the reason why is because when you multiply fractions, you just multiply across. 19 times 1 is 19. 2 times 3 is 6. All right? Um, over here, y is less than 1 sixth. All right. Now, you guys might want to go ahead and convert the decimals so you can guys see like well, what, what exactly you know, are these and so forth. Um, notice that 6 does not evenly divide into 19. But it goes in there, what, 3 and 1 third, right? Roughly. Three, it's going to be 3.333. Yes? So and then 1 sixth. Actually, I don't know the decimal approximation for 1 sixth. Does anybody have a calculator 1 sixth? I don't know the decimal approximation for that. But I just want to give you guys a rough estimate of that to help you graph. 1 divided by 6 is 0.1666. OK. So you don't have to convert to decimals. But the reason why I want, sh why I want to show that to you, because I think graphing decimals is a little bit easier than graphing fractions. So to graph your final answer, you go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And again, guys, I will say this is probably the most difficult problem that you will e see on, the, your, on your work. So what we do is we plot each one of these points. Now, ladies, they're decimals. They're not integers. So you're going to have to estimate on your line. 3.33 is going to be somewhere right around here, correct? Everybody agree with me? OK. 
It's a greater than. So is that an open point or a closed point? Open. open. So you leave it open. Now, it says y is greater than 3.33, roughly. So is that going to be, are the points to the right greater than or are the points to the left? Right. right. So you shade to the right. You could also use test points. Now, let's plot 0.16. Well, that's greater than 0, but less than 1, right? So that's going to be like right here. Now, is that open or closed? Open. Open. And the points that are smaller than 0.16, is that to the left or to the right? Left. And there you go, you're done. Now, what's very important for you guys to understand, if this was an and, right, then more than likely they would cross and you'd have to define where they intersect. That's where it's important for you guys to understand what is my original inequality symbol, which type of compound inequality am I going to graph? Does that make sense? Okay.